boom jesus is god how relevant right um, i actually got it at this poetry event i was deeply inspired by the story behind the actual sweater and so i'm out here to support any young person especially who's trying to put in work for God. Nevertheless, getting into the video, we're really coming down to the end of our videos of seeing whether or not Jesus Christ is worthy of worship and whether or not he is divine. Now, I don't claim that this video series is an exhaustive study. It doesn't exhaust the matter. But I believe that we've seen clearly and plainly, friends, that Jesus Christ is both divine and for sure is worthy of worship. Now, I'm going to put right here, right here in this box right here, all of the instances in the Gospels where Jesus, screenshot it, Scre go ahead and screenshot it. These are all of the instances in the Gospels where Jesus Christ receives worship. Now, if Jesus Christ was some lesser God, or just a man, or just a prophet, a messenger of God, then Jesus Christ should not receive worship. It's just like if somebody came to me and you know started praising me and worshiping me, and like I'm just out here just receiving it. What? That's blasphemy. But here we see in all of those instances, Jesus Christ receives the worship. Not once, friends, does Jesus say, guys, don't worship me. But we even see that Jesus Christ receives the worship and then answers or grants the request of the worshiper. And so friends, we see plainly that the Bible teaches that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is worthy of your and even my worship. Nevertheless, I want to point your mind to a couple examples. We find in the book of Luke 24, we won't be long, we find in the book of Luke chapter 24 and verse 51, the Bible says something interesting. Now, in Luke 24 and verse 51, the Bible says that Jesus blessed the people, then he was parted from them, then he was carried up into heaven. Now, in verse 52, the Bible says, and they worshipped him, they worshipped Jesus, and returned unto Jerusalem with great joy. Okay, now, verse 53, the Bible says, and they were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Now, in verse 53, that God there is referring, I believe, to the Father. I mean, if you believe it's referring to Jesus, then yeah, yeah. So, of course, you know, let's say it's referring to the Father. So, if it's referring to the Father, we see that the Father right there was receiving praise and blessing, right? Something that only God, whoever, whatever God is, is worthy to receive, right? Okay, so because God is receiving praise in verse 53, we see also in verse 52 that Jesus Christ is receiving what? Worship. So, clearly from Luke 24, we see two individuals worthy of worship, praise, and blessing. What? Nevertheless, we continue to the next example, man. We go to the book of Matthew, chapter 28. Now, in Matthew 28, we have the two Marys. One Mary, the mother of Jesus, and two Mary Magdalene. We see these two women, Marys, right? The two Marys go to the, to the grave where Jesus is laid. And they're looking for Jesus, but the angel meets them, and the angel's like, guys, who are you looking for? Jesus Christ has risen already. Go tell the disciples that he is risen, he is risen. And so they're apt now, or at least I believe they're apt, or maybe kind of, who knows how to explain that emotion but they're going now and we pick up the story in matthew 28 and verse 9 and please 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 pay attention in matthew 28 and verse 9 the bible says and as they speaking about the two marys as they went to tell his speaking about jesus disciples as they went to tell his disciples behold jesus met them and said unto them all hail what does the next verse say? Or the next part of the verse? It says, And they came and held him by the feet. And did what? And worshipped him. Now, friends, oh, friends, if there is ever an op they're, they're on the feet. Now, okay, they either did one or two things, right? They either did this. Jesus, I worship you. I worship you. Which would be pretty awkward. Or they did this. Now, that makes more sense. Now, if they're on the floor holding the feet of our Lord and Savior Jesus, worshiping him. Friends, this is utmost blasphemy for a man to receive. But here we see that Jesus Christ, he literally responds and tells the two Marys. In verse 10, the next verse, he says, Be not afraid, but go and tell the disciples. And so friends, here we see that Jesus Christ, in the midst of the people, the two Marys, worshiping Jesus, the one thing Jesus had to say to them was, friend, be not afraid. And so do you live in a country, a nation, a place, a family, where you're afraid to worship Jesus? If you convert, maybe, you know, the, the, the counsel of Christ is, friend, be not afraid. 
afraid. And so friends, here we see that Jesus Christ in the midst of the people, the two Marys worshiping Jesus, the one thing Jesus had to say to them was, friend, be not 